Good evening, I'm Edward Salt with the latest from South Today. Children from poor backgrounds are being failed by many schools here in the South. That's according to Ofsted, which published its annual report today. They say high standards for most pupils continue to mask serious underperformance by pupils from low-income families. And it's deeply concerned that the education gap's not closing. The underachievement of children in deprived coastal communities continues to be a particular concern as well. But let's just consider the contrast now between two of our local authorities. In Wokingham, 98% of children attend a good or outstanding secondary school, while on the Isle of Wight, that figure is just 22%. Brani Leyland reports on how our schools are addressing the issue. Keller. Quick, yes, thank you. Very quickly done. Teaching challenging subjects okay. like Latin well is one reason this is a good school. In fact, Christ the King on the Isle of Wight is the only secondary school currently rated good by Ofsted here. Despite signs of improvement across the island schools, which the council says are significant, Ofsted says GCSE results aren't picking up fast enough. It's encouraging successful schools like this one to spread good practice by sharing its methods and ethos. Each and every single individual child is well known here. We know exactly which children are at risk of underachieving, which children could benefit from intervention and support. The school here works hard to ensure pupils from all backgrounds do well. Ofsted says across the island as a whole, too few children from low-income families reach their potential, a pattern repeated in Portsmouth, Reading and other parts of the south. Where we've got uh, greater concentrations of deprived youngsters, particularly around the coast, we find greater concentrations of those less effective schools. And it really matters because unless we're giving every child a fair crack of the whip, we're not going to thrive and prosper as an economy, as a country, because we're simply not making full use of all of our children's potential. Tell me what you're looking forward to in terms of your finances. Ofsted says recruitment and strong leadership play vital parts in making lasting improvements. Portsmouth-born Natalie Shepherd has returned to her hometown to make a difference. She took on Portsmouth Academy for Girls two years ago when it was in special measures. Behaviour is now excellent and the girls are very aspirational. Um, they, th they think about their future, they're working towards their future, their work ethic is brilliant. And the second thing that's really improved has been the teaching and learning. Ofsted says the general picture in the South Schools is positive, but it says it won't rest until all pupils reach their potential. Bryony Leyland, BBC South Today. Emergency services have been dealing with a serious road accident on a motorway in Southampton tonight. Police have confirmed several vehicles were involved in the incident on the M271 after half past five. Some eyewitnesses reported a crash involving two lorries. South Central Ambulance say two people have been taken to hospital. The northbound carriageway is now open, but the southbound stretch will remain closed for some time. The mother of a woman accused of terror offences has told a court that she brought up her daughter in a moderate Islamic household and despises the extremist group ISIS. Sana Ahmed Khan and her husband, Mohammed Rachman, both from Reading, are accused of planning a terror attack on London. The pair are said to have bought ingredients to make a homemade bomb. Both deny the charges against them. The last residents of a care home in Salisbury for adults with severe disabilities left the place they've called home for more than two decades today. Scope, the charity which ran Shapland Close, said the decision to close it was taken because it fell below standards. New accommodation has been found for those who live there in Hampshire, but some families are concerned it's too far away. Now, this time tomorrow, we should know if the UK will launch or be involved in airstrikes against Islamic State targets in Syria. MPs from across the South will take part in an all-day debate on the issue in Parliament. Earlier, I asked our political editor, Peter Henley, which way our MPs will vote. Most of the MPs in our region are Conservative, and the Prime Minister has asked them to support him. Some have agreed with that. A lot of new MPs in our region who certainly don't want to be seen as rebels. But others, uh, Christopher Chope in Christchurch in Dorset says he's still thinking about whether or not he will support airstrikes. Uh, Richard Drax was one who had reservations uh, about how this is actually happening. Although he has a military background, he's not sure about this. Uh, but I think he will probably come and vote in favour of airstrikes. Uh, on the Isle of Wight, Andrew Turner has been quite clear that he doesn't support the action because he says, uh, who is going to take over Syria if ISIS are destroyed? This is what he said in a debate yesterday. The Prime Minister himself said, yeah. we shall not have 
boots on the ground. So where are these supporters coming from? We are not speaking about one army under one general, but several different factions, some of which are competing against each other. There are strong feelings on both sides, though, Ed. This is Philip Lee, the MP for Bracknell. The threat from them is clear and present. The legal justification is strong, and it is right that Britain should play a leading role with its allies in eradicating ISIS Daesh from the face of the earth. So, Peter, that's the Tories. We know that Jeremy Corbyn is allowing a free vote for his MPs. How do we think those here in the South will vote? Uh, there are just two. Andrew Smith in Oxford says he will vote against airstrikes. Alan Whitehead, who's a shadow frontbench minister with Jeremy Corbyn, also says he will vote against. OK, Peter, for now, thank you very much indeed. And finally, it's been confirmed a permanent memorial will be created as a fitting, lasting tribute to those who died in the Shoreham Air disaster. One idea is to create a memorial walk along the River Ada here. Eleven men were killed when a vintage Hawker Hunter jet crashed into the A27 during the Shoreham Air Show in August. And that is it from South Today. So far this evening, we're back with bulletins during BBC Breakfast. And there's more on the Syria vote over on Newsnight over on BBC Two. But I shall leave you now with Alexis and the weather forecast. Thank you, Ed. It was a very mild November and a very mild start to December. Today, we saw temperatures above the seasonal average by three or four Celsius. And there may be possible drizzle overnight tonight, more so for coastal stretches and over hilltop areas. So outbreaks of light rain and drizzle through the night. Temperatures will stay in double figures in some places. Now, 10 Celsius is normally a daytime temperature for this time of year. There will be a lot of cloud tomorrow, but with the increasing southwesterly breeze, that should help to break the cloud cover. So we will see some sunny spells, but there is a lot of cloud in general. And temperatures will reach a mild 12 to 13 Celsius. Now, a band of rain will sink its way southwards on Thursday, maybe reaching parts of Oxfordshire during the afternoon. But the bulk of Thursday should be mainly dry, quite a cloudy day all in all. Some breaks for the lucky few of us, but this week... There is a lot of cloud. The winds will be brisk from the southwest. Up next with the national forecast, here's Jay Wynn.